Absolutely. So culture has such uh, a huge impact uh, on the way uh, people think, you know, and, and, and we see that in, in every area of, of our life, of our culture, of our politics. You know, if, if, if you say something more than three or four times, you, you start to think that it's true when that's actually not the case. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that in our politics and in our culture or so, but uh, you're absolutely right, Pastor. Uh, sometimes it takes just someone, ye who are spiritual, uh, if you would just make a note. I, I had somebody come in and I asked, how you doing? I'm blessed, Pastor. Everything's been good. Knock on wood. They knock on my desk. Said, please don't knock on my desk. <laughs> please, please, please don't knock on my desk. Don't, don't, knock, on, don't knock on wood. It, you bless regardless of the wood. If it was bad, if it was made of plastic, you'd still be blessed. Right. You know, but but sometimes, you know, again, you get four or five or six or ten or how many other people that agree with you or say amen or 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 you know, you get into this this community of thought uh, uh, behind uh, ideas and principles that are totally false. And it, it takes leadership and, and uh, for us as, as pastors and, and elders and teachers and, and whatever, uh, whatever role you may play to, to remind somebody that, uh, you know, you do it in a light way, non-judgmental way, but nonetheless do it and, and, and let them know, hey, uh, there's no truth to that. There's no truth to that. So when you have members of your, your churches that come to you uh, with these types of, of attitudes and, and um, beliefs and so forth, how do you get them to break those habits, if you will, if any of them have come to you voluntarily? Yeah. Well, I, I, I weigh things by the word of God and I help them to see what's truth um, according to scripture and, and what's, what's not true. And so <clears throat> one of the things I've learned even over my life, and I'll, I'll be transparent and say, you know, when I was younger coming up, I avoided the cracks too. You know, um, I remember when if you broke a mirror, um, mm-hmm. you got, what, 50 years of bad luck? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And some of the 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 not so popular things that we embrace. Sometimes we would say, if something bad is happening to us, God is punishing us. Mm-hmm. That's right. And mm-hmm. and to me, that's a superstition. When, mm-hmm. But it is it is so far from the truth. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is because we're ignorant to the character of God mm-hmm. and to the nature of God. So therefore, because we don't know, we have to make somebody responsible for what is happening or what is not happening in our lives. And so I help people to see that what they are embracing has no type of word premise and they must come out of agreement with that particular mindset. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 12 that we we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Mm -hmm. And so... In order for your mind to experience transformation, you have to give it new information. Mm -hmm. And so you have to present something uh, to them that is based upon truth so that they can come out of agreement with that lie or that tale or that thick theory that that the only power that it has is what they give it. I think that's important to state as well. What do you think about that, Dr. Absolutely, Pastor. You're right on point. Uh, there's a, a story uh, uh, in scripture, so out of Acts 28th chapter, where, mm-hmm. where Paul had put some sticks onto a fire and a viper uh, jumped out of, of the heat or so and had clung to Paul's hand. And it says the people saw the, the creature hanging or saw the snake hanging from his hand and said to one another, this man is obviously a murderer. You know, that's their, you know, if snakes jump out and bite you, this means that, but this means that. Uh, And they were sitting there actually waiting for the venom. Paul shook the snake off and and they were waiting and waiting for this venom venom to take its place. And and it says there at the end of that passage, uh, uh, when they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him, 
they change their minds. Mm. Uh, sometimes, you know, it takes people actually uh, walking through it. You, you as a leader may have to actually walk them through something, you know, in order for them to physically see that what you're stating with your lips is not not God, not scripture, you know, uh, and, 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 and for some people, it takes a little bit longer than another. I had a member that believed that with all her heart that black people were cursed. And, and she, she took that scripture, uh, going back to, to Cain and, 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 and all go back to Genesis. Yeah. And I, I had to sort of walk her through scripture and through history uh, you know, not later. There was a there was a flood that came after that. Where the, you know, the, you know, things had started over after the flood. There were all sorts of, of, of chronological, non chronological, and historical things that I had to share with her. And she still held on for it. You know, you know, we were I was living in Richmond, Virginia at the time, and there were so many negative things going on. But, but sometimes you have to walk with people. Uh, and, and and try to reveal to them as best as you can, you know, the history. And as as pastors, he said, provide them with truth, you know. And and with you, when you remove what they perceive to be truth, you have to replace it with something so that is real. Uh, and and that exists so much within our church, you know. We 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 have to walk through uh, the truth. And, and live out that truth ourselves and, or, and, and then not just speak it, but live it ourselves. And Pastor, I want to ask you a question and it may, I don't, I don't mean to sound insensitive and it may sound harsh, mm-hmm. but would you agree that sometimes you have to allow people to see the, what they believe in to fail? Absolutely. Uh, sometimes life is the best teacher uh, experiences is, is, you know, uh, you have to actually let them walk through that water or walk through that 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 uh, uh, situation in order for them to have that truth. There's some things you can't tell them. Uh, the same thing with my children. Some things I try to teach you as a father. Uh, but then some things you're just going to have to walk through and learn this thing for yourself or so. And and uh, and, and I think you're absolutely right, Pastor C. Sometimes you have to allow, and I don't think it's. I don't think it's necessarily being harsh. I, I, I think uh, it, it may sound that way, but I, I think it, it, it's literally uh, allowing God to reveal himself to people by going through whatever it is they need to go through to see that God is real. Sometimes you won't find that out until you get to the other side of through. Absolutely. So... Reverend Doctor and Pastor C, my, my next question is, so, you know, you have, a, I guess, a large swath of people in various denominations that have their particular superstitions. And so my question is, so if I'm like, uh, you know, Sister Goodnight and I'm on the usher board. I'm on the red hat committee. I'm on the refreshment Sister committee. Who? Sister, Sister, Sister good night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and Sister good night, you know, she reads the announcements. She's on the usher board. She's a greeter. She does the, the minute for mission. She just does it all, you know, and, and does it faithfully. And she's there every Sunday doing what she does in typical sister good night fashion and then on sunday she runs right out and she only goes in the front door of her house because it's redskin sunday Mm -hmm. so is sister good night a a person that you would consider to have a lack of faith or a lack of belief if if i can go first on that i don't i would not because it's you can have faith in God in certain areas and lack it in other areas. Um, it doesn't make her a bad person, a sinner, or one who doesn't believe in Christ. I just think that w- when it comes to that particular area of her life, um, she feels as if she contributes to something um, based upon her behaviors and her behaviors is what causes a win or a lose in the context of this particular conversation. 
Um, I would I would say that Sister Goodnight, <laughs> um, she must be introduced to truth as it relates to that that her behaviors are not altering anything. Um, I think I don't. And Pastor, you can help me with this. Do we yeah. think that we're that powerful? That our patterns of behaviors can alter a score, can alter a day, can alter um, what happens good and what happens bad. I mean, uh, what, what what is your take on that, Doctor? Yeah, I I I I'm with you. I I, I think Sister Goodnight um, <laughs> uh, is a believer, still saves, uh, 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 still loves the Lord, and committed to the Lord, or so. Uh, but there are some areas or so uh, that don't quite line up or so, which means there's still a little bit of more development that needs to take place in that particular area or so. And 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 that's not just restricted to 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 to, to Sister Goodnight. Uh, 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 Reverend Doctor need to be developed in a few areas. Or so I I think that's for all of us. Or so that's not something that is is limited. The lack of development uh, or certain behaviors that don't quite line up with what we confess yeah. uh, is not something that would be just limited to the sister good night. But but from from the pew from the pews to the pulpit uh, out the front door and back door all around the kingdom of God or so there are areas. Uh, where we still need growth, I, I recall pastor, uh, a passage in Acts where 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 uh, Paul called Peter out. You know, now you're 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 anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, you are doing miraculous things. Yet when you get around a certain group of people, you act one way. Absolutely. And 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 then when you're around other folk, when you're when you're around Jews, you act this way. When you're around the Gentiles, there's a flip. Uh, and there's a need for some further development was what, what Paul was trying to point out or so, but, uh, uh, Mike, you bring up an, uh, uh, chief, you bring up an excellent point. You know, this is something that, uh, I don't think is, uh, it equates to her not having faith, but just having certain areas or so that need to be further developed. And I, and I think that goes for all of us in certain areas of our lives. Absolutely. I agree, Doc. And so do you think that in deep down that people sort of say, OK, you know what? I, you know, I read my Bible and I love church and, and I definitely believe in God, but I still need a little extra help for the Redskins game or for this promotion <laughs> I'm going to. Or, or, or do you think people just don't really believe like they say they do? Wow. And, and and you know what I'm going to do, Pastor? I'm going to give you guys a chance to think on that because that's what we want to pick up when we come back from the break. We want to talk about that question that I just asked. And then I want to talk about Pastor C and, and Dr. Hankins. How do we go about getting people to turn the corner on their faith and sort of stop wearing that same sweater or stop sitting in that same chair? So keep it locked. We'll be right back after the break. This is Great No Chaser Talk Radio. We're just getting started. Great No Chaser Talk Radio. He's drinking that with no chaser. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym... I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... Is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. The path to happiness is not the easy one, but taking drugs will not make it easier. Many people got lost and end up losing their life to drugs. 
If you or anyone that you know is within that path, don't be afraid to seek for help. 